Welcome to my video. This is my review and thoughts of the Nebula short film Dracula's Ex-Girlfriend from this year, 2024. And uh, yeah, so if you're new or have forgotten, uh, there will only be spoilers for this once I get into the thoughts section. And I will, you know, verbally let you know before I do. And uh, I think that is about it. Let's dive right. Yeah. Um, so addressing the elephant in the room right up front. Yeah, uh, I am not trans. I try to be an ally. I am not uh, a woman. Again, try to be a feminist ally. And I never dated Dracula. So the, you know, I am coming at this from an outsider's point of view, but I have absorbed a lot of, you know, feminism and trans content right here on YouTube. So I'm going to do my best. I am going to try really hard not to say something just, yeah. Um, and it just, yeah, something completely ridiculous. Uh, please call me out if, if I do. And... Um, I, I have absolutely no intention of talking over members of those communities. I just, I know from experience that there are some people who, you know, some white cishead men, perhaps especially, yeah, um, who just won't listen to something if it's not being conveyed by another cishet, you know, white man, so that's part of why I'm, I'm doing this. Um, I think that, oh, right, right, uh, honestly, I haven't right, I haven't quite decided yet if I am going to swear in this video or not. Uh, there is, there's not a lot said on screen, but there's, you know, there, there's this part where someone's scrolling through texts, and there's, like, a dozen F words in, in, you know, a single paragraph, a single text. Um, yeah, we'll see. You know, if you, if you couldn't handle swearing at all, you, you, you know, you certainly can't watch this entire short, so, but yeah, um, I don't know if yet, if I'm going to or not. Um, I think that is it for the pre, like, the, the stuff I gotta get out of the way, so, um, yeah, this, you know, the basic setup here is that one of Dracula's ex-girlfriends and his current girlfriend are, like, meeting up in a restaurant to, to talk, and that, I think, is as much as I'm gonna say of, like, plot wise. I will say, you know, oh, oh right, uh, uh, I just realized, I forgot to say, I absolutely love this. Um, but, but yeah, so, so a lot of what I'm gonna say is, is neutral, not criticism. Um, yeah, the, the, you know, this is one of those where I'm gonna try to analyze and really appreciate what they did here instead of, like, trying to tear it down and, and such. I found very little like, wrong with this at, at all. Um, but, but yeah, the, um, crap, where was I? Uh, yeah, life with untreated ADD, ADHD. Tried medication once and made it worse. Um, crap, maybe I'll, maybe I'll remember later, um, what I was trying to say there. Um, but the, um, yeah, that'll, that'll, yes, so, with the, the, um, yes, plot, uh, that was it. Uh, it's not super plot heavy, it is, you know, a, a part of it, I won't say how much, is a conversation between these two women about, you know, Dracula. Not only, not, not, you know, that's clearly not, they're, they're trying, 
at least one of them is trying to, to not only talk about Dracula, but he casts quite a shadow. He may not have a reflection, but he casts a long shadow. And, yeah, um, they, they use it really well as the a metaphor. You know, this is not, you know, I, I was joking earlier when I said I didn't, you know, oh, I haven't dated Dracula. Not that I have, but it's not literally about that. You know, it is a, a very potent metaphor. You know, the, the um, yeah. One of the obvious ones, and this is, you know, if, I, if this is, if the following is shocking to you, you must just not know anything about vampires. Obviously, you know, the whole feeding on blood thing, metaphor for sex, you know, and it's used quite well here. You know, there's, they, they actually explore sexuality, you know, it's, it's not like constantly showing it, but the way they talk about feeding on blood, you know, I wouldn't say all of the, t well, it's not always just sex. Sometimes it's certain types of, of sex, certain relationship to sex, but it's definitely in part about sex. And the, the, yeah, I, one of the other major things is toxic relationship. And it's, you know, it's not a surprise that Dracula's kind of toxic, you know, and I, I kind of love that. Like, I haven't watched every vampire movie out there. It's, and I'm, I can't stop saying vampire the way that Nicolas Cage does. I, I don't know why. Um, but the, yeah, you know, it did kind of tickle me. I just recently watched and, and did a video on the second Twilight movie, New Moon. And then in this, one of the characters is like, you know, we shouldn't drink blood, kind of. Th so, yeah, that was a, a fun little, you know, if, if I believed in, in God, that would seem like, you know, some kind of, like, some kind of message to keep watching Vampire Media. It's all connected or something. Or if I was a conspiracy theorist, I guess. Um, but the, yeah. I, I wouldn't rule out, maybe it's been brought up elsewhere, but... Yeah, this one really goes in on, yeah, Dracula is toxic. Whether he's your ex or your current partner, he is toxic. And let's see. One major element here is the the trans thing. Because the way they talk about Dracula, it sounds like... So, you know, if we're, you know, to, yeah, the the metaphor here would be that he's a, a chaser. You know, he's he's someone who fetishizes uh, trans women and, you know, yeah, goes specifically for them. It's not that he likes them as people. It's that, yeah, he's he's into it, you know, and so he doesn't actually treat them with humanity. And it is obviously not accidental that both of the women in this that are you know one yeah one of them was with Dracula the other one is they are both played by trans women and it's not explicitly called out in the text you know but again the the metaphor permeates this whole thing quite nicely so yeah um, and I understand that the the director, who also did several other things, hold on, Valentin V, you know, this is one of those indies where the director did a bunch of other things. She also worked on visual effects and, I want to say, cinematography and such, you know, she, yeah, um, really has vision, and I'm just going to make sure... Okay, as far as I can tell, Valentina goes by, you know what, I'm just going to make doubly sure. Um, so, oops, there we go. So that I'm not misgendering throughout this entire thing. Um, pronouns and uh, nothing. Seriously? I didn't even know you could get a... Not, okay, maybe it's... Maybe I'll try a different... I swear I'm not going to spend forever on this. Um, 
Okay, you know what? I am... I'm I'm really struggling to find something that specifically says uh okay I guess just in case um I've I understand that they them is considered neutral if you don't know for sure what someone's pronouns are so but but yeah um and and I couldn't quite I I saw that she uh sorry I saw that they were a member of the LGBTQ plus community. LGBTQIA plus. I, I do not mean to be making fun of the, yeah, abbreviation. Um, I did see that they were part of the community. I, I didn't really see w uh, which part, but yeah, th this is very LGBTQ plus uh, of, a, of a production through and through. Um, it was written by Abigail Thorne, and she does phenomenal. I, I really, I, I am going to watch and do a video on, well, I guess we'll see if I have enough to say to do a video on, because I'm really not that much of an expert on Shakespeare. Um, I've read some plays, seen some, uh, you know, adaptations of them and, and such, uh, but possibly even, wait, are they called adaptations if it's stage performance, or are they just called, whatever. Um... Yeah, I'm definitely going to watch The Prince. It's just, you know, right now I'm not watching very many movies at all. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, I'm really glad that Abigail, you know, is, is you know, she, like, this is, like, career. She, you know, like, I mean, I, I would really miss her if she stopped making YouTube content, but you know, I want her to thrive. That's that's more important. Um, right, and I also think that the fact that they specifically cast Abigail, who, you know, she was on YouTube before she transitioned. You know, from, from what I understand, before she realized she was trans, back when she was an egg, you know, and yeah, um, it's, I, I don't suppose it's necessarily every single time you see her in something, but certainly when you see her in something that is, you know, some of the time when you see her in something, it is, you know, that the, we, we, it's not that she doesn't pass. I'm, I'm not saying that. And, and, you know, she, she looks great, but we knew her before she transitioned also and so you know it is something that you know we we think about while while watching not not in a bad way but just it's it you know i'm not saying that's always the case i don't know you know i i know that she was on house of the dragon or hot d which i understand for some young American women is more popular right now than, like, human hot D, which I really don't blame them for considering the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And I do find it just preposterous that then you have the men say, ah, with, but, but, well, fight harder then. Fight for women's rights if you want them to like you. Just, yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that you as a woman have to like a man that, that fights for feminism. But obviously it makes, you know, you certainly don't have to like a man who doesn't. Um, but the, the, yeah. Um, let's see. I think that might about cover, um, yeah, uh, I did get a slight... I, I still haven't watched Fleabag. I, th I think at some point I might have to. I, again, I, I realize that you know, it's not really made for me and, and such, but everything I've seen, like every, every time I see a, a woman talk about it, I've even seen like there was this clip of like a conservative woman talking about how she hated that 
you know, she she thought it was wrong for Phoebe Waller Bridge, who plays Fleabag, and and you know, is is legit behind. You know, she yeah, the the, the stage show and the the show itself. Like she had a lot of of creative control over it. Uh, you know, not not to take away from anybody else's, but yeah, um, yeah, this conservative woman was angry that Phoebe Waller Bridge was in the most recent Indiana Jones. And then she did quite solid analysis of Fleabag and apparently really liked it, you know. So, yeah, even even conservative women can can appreciate it. Um, yeah, it sounds great. Recently, I've been getting a slight Fleabag vibe off Abigail Thorne. And I mean that in a flattering way, you know. The the self-effacing, the the like understanding of you know yeah what what young women go through today and i feel like the the accent's also similar but i've never been great at telling apart like english diff different english accents but yeah um oh right right i want to say but part of the reason i feel like in this one you know abigail's transness you know is is notable is that you know nebula it's not that there's no conservatives on there but there are a lot of left-wingers and and some very pretty pretty far left wing you know and if you're a left-winger you know you and you're using any kind of video platform yeah, there's a pretty decent chance you know Abigail as Philosophy Tube and know that she used to identify as, as male. And let's see. Uh, that is almost all that I have that isn't spoilery. Let's see, there was the... Uh, right, uh, yeah, this is this is a very, very funny short, uh, you know, uh, just, yeah, like, it's not constantly funny, and it's certainly not constantly, like, uproariously funny, but there is, like, this undercurrent of, of tension that is also mine for laughs, you know, again, Dracula, you know, is, is gonna be ten, uh, yeah, so you've, yeah, you have Dracula, <clears throat> inherent tension, Dracula being toxic, inherent tension. There's some more with the fact that, you know, it's it's a current partner and ex of, of a, the same person having a conversation. There's, you know, there's various things that, yeah. Um, but yeah, when it, when it's, when it goes for the jugular, as it were, it is incredibly funny. Like, I laughed out loud several times watching this. Um, and I think, yeah, and, and, right, uh, uh, and this is one of those productions that understand that you can be, you can switch back and forth effectively from comedy and, you know, I, I don't know if outright horror, like, it, I see it listed as thriller, uh, let's see, are there, um, hold on, where, where do I click to see all of no, yeah, that appears to be all... Okay, so it's not listed as horror. Um, yeah, you know, you can go back and forth between, you know, scary, tense, and funny without losing either of them. You know, this is... It's it's difficult, but it is doable. You know, you also see it in Evil Dead, in Shaun of the Dead, you know, stuff like that. Uh, there's some reclaiming of slurs, which is, is very, very nicely done. This is one of those, like, if you are 100% unfamiliar with LGBTQ plus comedy, this might shock you. That this is, that is something that, you know, I'll admit, like, a few years ago, I had no idea. But, yeah, at this point, I've, I've seen, the, um, they have some very edgy jokes sometimes, you know, I... It's it's kind of funny when you see like transphobes and homophobes be like, oh, you know, the LGBTQ plus community just have no sense of humor. No, they have a sense of humor. You just maybe don't get it or maybe you haven't been exposed to it. 
they don't laugh at your jokes because your jokes aren't funny. Your jokes are just punching down. You're just being a jerk to a, to a minority population. Their jokes are much, much funnier. The, like, that's the thing. Like, I... When I hear that someone is making a, a trans joke or a, or a gay joke or something like that, you know, I always, I always hope that it's a member of the community, you know, because just, yeah, they're so funny. Like, if you don't believe me, watch Kaylin Conrad, watch, okay, so I know ContraPoints is, you know, considered problematic. You know, I'm not making excuses for everything she's said and done, but... It's, yeah, um, yeah, the, the, you know, just incredibly funny, uh, uh, CJ the X also, um, Jamie Dodger or Jamie Dodger is the, the channel name, is not always, like, super edgy, but he is incredibly funny, uh, Emma Thorne, very, very funny, sometimes edgy, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see the the but but yeah. I think that might more or less. I think that's everything that oh right right yeah uh, so so just briefly about the technical just incredible like beyond just like competent but actually like really really compelling. Um, there's this thing they do where if there's a real vampire moment the lighting will change this more sinister you know keeping in mind this is two people in public you know and they're you know yeah it's it's you know, they're, they're some of the time like saying vampire stuff like you know so so yeah um and and yeah when it gets especially tense with the vampire thing sometimes the lighting will will and it's yeah it's it's really really well done um yeah the editing is is really quite effective um you know it knows both when to like for some of it they are having a conversation and it understands this is you know if, if you're trying to get into editing one of the things when there's a conversation don't just do like constant shot reverse shot and and like just letting a line play out and then cutting to the other person and they'll they'll give use reaction shots cut to other angles make sure that the editing is capturing the flow of the conversation because a conversation you know in real life a conversation can just be a conversation but in movies and tv shows and such you'll want there to be something you know there's there's often like oh there that was an important piece of information dropped or how did how could that person possibly bring that up or you know stuff like that you gotta capitalize on those moments in the editing you know the the director is probably going to try to do that in the acting performances as well so you're going to have stuff to work with there you know just make sure to choose angles and and yeah you know sometimes let something rest to like let something land but don't just constantly let an entire line play out in a sh yeah shot reverse shot, if it's not serving the the pacing of the the scene, I'm just gonna make sure if that is something I need to deal with immediately. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think that might be about right. Uh, yeah, very very effective use of of score. Um, you know, some of the time it is just this kind of, you know, yeah, it's, it's two people in a restaurant, so it's got that kind of, also great, great sound work in general, like, it really sounds like this is a, you know, a part of, of, um, a restaurant that's, that's, you know, full of people, which, you know, when they're shooting, the extras are not necessarily going to make the kind of noise that they would if they were sitting in a restaurant in real life because that really screws over the audio engineer. So, you know, a lot of it was like, yeah, added in later. And that's where you got to be careful not to make it sound like it's just been made, even though that's what it's been, because that can be really distracting, you know. Uh, 
let's see what's the other thing um yeah yeah the score you know yeah some of the time it's just yeah it's two people in a restaurant and then sometimes it's like tense because of the circumstance and then they also use uh two tessa violet songs which yeah it's it's one of those things i never know i yeah, i feel like people who are gonna watch this short are you know not gonna get like upset at me saying yeah i i listened to tessa violet i think she's very very talented you know again obviously it doesn't a lot of her lyrics don't apply to me but i yeah i want to to understand you know women and and you know minorities in general you know i i try to absorb you know some of their their media and and especially a lot of youtube analysis by them by members of the those communities you know i i think that the only way to to solve problems is to understand and and yeah understand the problems and a lot of the time you know i it's it frustrates me when I see, you know, fellow white cishet males, uh, just, uh, yeah, just saying, oh, you know, I, I don't need to listen to, to minorities to, to understand their, their problems. Yeah, you do. That's, it's, we're only ever going to have a second, ah, crap, what's it called? Second hand, uh, you know, understanding and account of, of these things. Um... And, and the songs are, are well used, and there's this, you know, if you go on Nebula, you know, it actually, it auto-plays after watching the, the short itself. There's a, there's a blooper reel, and, you know, there's a, there's a part of it where, you know, various cast and crew are, are you know, miming to the, the, the lyrics of the song. And then Tessa herself pops up, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I was, I was sitting there thinking, you know, I, I, she strikes me as the kind of person who would be, you know, like, I, I don't know that, I haven't watched that much, like, behind the scenes, a little, little bit, but based on her songs, she, she strikes me as the kind of person who would, yeah, really vibe with, with this kind of, of production. Um... It's always cool when you, you know, obviously it's always, is not always feasible. You know, sometimes you're using music from someone who's unreachable, sometimes even someone who's passed on, you know, but it's cool when they're able to, to get in touch with the original, you know, artist and actually, yeah. Uh, I think that might be, oh, right, right. I just wanted to briefly add, you know, obviously when I compare this to Fleabag, I, you know, it's not that it has the asides, but, you know, Fleabag has the asides where she's confiding in the audience, and here it's two women talking in, in the same room, you know, so in, in place of the asides, you have the dialogue. I think that might do it for the... Yeah. So, that brings us to the spoiler section. So, just gonna note, it is 28, and what was it, 30? 30 seconds. Spoilers, there we go. And, uh, there we go, yes. Uh, oh, right, right, I uh, just wanted to briefly note, on, on the IMDb trivia, there's actually the, the you know, when, yeah, a lot of people signed up specifically for this when, when like, I think it was the tea, was it the teaser or just the announcement, something like that, you know, and and yeah, they way exceeded their budget and actually were able to increase the the budget because of it, which just yeah, wonderful. I'm so glad Nebula is is around. Um, there's stuff in the yeah, this this maybe does best go in the in the actual spoiler section. There's some violence and, and blood in this that, like, you know, yeah, you could put it on YouTube, but let's see. Uh, I'm not I'm not a big enough YouTuber to be part of it, but if I understand correctly, it's monetization that might be affected, you know, if there is, uh, you know, violence and, and blood. And I've heard, I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, I'd, I'd like to think that is no longer the case, but apparently sometimes you can, a, a video might be demonetized just for bringing up 
transness because that's seen as inherently you know oh that's that's not advertiser friendly you can't you know children can't hear. not that children should be watching this obviously but you know some some content by and for trans people is very specifically to to help trans kids you know so yeah um and you know maybe some competition can help challenge youtube on that um let's see uh yeah i really don't like being the guy the cis head guy saying oh i really in in this you know lgbtq plus production i really related to the i guess i'm gonna this is at least twice i i was also sort of that on on willow but i'm sorry i really really alexander was great he really was, you know, and just, I really love how, you know, in, in like recent, in recent years that when, when you see like service workers, there's a bit more empathy for them. You know, I, like there's stuff from like the eighties and nineties where service workers are not really treated with a huge amount of, of humanity you know, like maybe at most, like we're supposed to be laughing at them in a being in a bad situation, which I realize is, you know, that's true for other groups as well. There was a lot of that in like raunchy, edgy comedy in the 80s. You know, Married with Children had a bunch of, of jokes about various, you know, sometimes it's service workers, sometimes it's women, you know, LGBTQ plus people, which there was some really messed up depictions of those in that not not a lot of empathy for the community um but but yeah you know in in recent years you know there it, it's here in this uh fire island which you know hilarious movie uh let's see what was the other thing uh the the menu has some some empathy for you know but yeah um i really dig how alexander like right from the from the word go like immediately you know he he walks in i wasn't actually sure if we were going to see him more if we we're going to see him very much in this from from that first you know because when he just pops up we're basically we're being told you know yeah um i am just gonna real quick i swear it's not meant as disrespect her name was Faye. that's right um, you know, Faye showed up either on time or maybe a little early, just in case. Belladonna is late. You know, that that's what we're getting from, you know. But I just love the undisguised frustration on his face. He's like, listen, if there's... We're not supposed... We're trying to get as many customers as possible... You can't hog an entire table, you know, it's, it, I'm guessing it's something like that. I don't, I've never worked at a, at a restaurant. I have nothing but respect for service workers, but I'm thinking it's something like, you know, but yeah. Um, or, or maybe it's also, yeah, like the, the fact that, yeah, she hasn't ordered yet, even though she's been there a while, which also means she might be, be at the table for, for longer. So, so that whole thing, yeah, you know. But yeah, I love that he's like throughout, he's just constantly like, oh my, okay, fine, you know, just like, he's barely restraining the, which I'm thinking someone who worked on this worked in, in food service or, or some kind of service job, you know, and yeah, I really appreciate it. It's clearly played as like, we're laughing, but we're not laughing at, oh, look at that, you know, service worker, does, you know, doesn't this suck for him? We're laughing at like it's it's like this thing of like you know I'm I'm sure every service worker watching is like ah oh, I wish I could do that you know it's cathartic you know it's that kind of thing um yeah just you know and he he keeps being like I yeah they have a they have some digs at the fact that this is like apparently like a, a really fancy you know it's a it's a restaurant that has personality don't you know it's it's you know so so you know she just says a burger and he's like i assume you mean the you know we get this whole name thing and you know and then she said like you know i want fries with that 
young lady. We do not have fries. We have, you know, and he explains the thing, and, and she's like, are those fries? And he's like, yeah, basically, you know. <laughs> Just yeah, very very funny. I'm I'm getting into the groove of of jokes about like overly fancy food. That was also great in in the menu and st yeah, the stuff on the the bear though. The bear is a bit, you know. The bear does really really love this, you know, fancy food also. But there are some choice words about the the food. Um. Let's see, yeah, and the, the, yeah, and several of these have this thing of like, you know what, I just like a burger and fries, can you, can you do that for me, please, I'm, you know, you know, I'm an uncultured swine, sue me, crucify me, whatever, I want to eat something, I want to feel full by the end of the meal, please, you know, and the, let's see, yeah, I, it's, and yeah, and Alexander, <laughs> the flirting with, with Belladonna is, is so, so good, you know, just like, you know, and, it, you know, he's not used to seeing customers in this fancy restaurant wearing this kind of, you know, yeah, what, what Belladonna wears, and that's also a great, you know, Belladonna from frame one, word one, is immediately, like, very, you know, there's this boisterous kind of energy to her. It's, it's, she doesn't really fit in. And, and the longer it goes, the more she provokes, the more she gets the attention of other patrons and, and such, you know. And, yeah, you know, it is this thing of, like, you know, it, it works as the, the you know, she's she was turned into a vampire fairly recently, so it's still new. It works as this thing of... You know, she's got a boyfriend, she's, you know, she has a partner that she feels really, you know, uh, she's going to Rome. It's, you know, all these various things, which is gorgeous, by the way. It's just, yeah, amazing. Uh, I was taken there as a child, was too young to appreciate it, but I do remember it being gorgeous. Um, let's, or wait, or was it? I've been to somewhere around there. Geography is not my strong suit. Um... Yeah, anyway, the, the, uh, what was the other thing? The, the, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the, the flirting, that was it. Uh, you know, <clears throat> yeah, when he first sees her, he's like, wow, that's, you know, usually I have to wait to, to you know, get off work. I, I did love, you know, I get off and I was, and he doesn't even pick up, like, it's, oh, I mean, uh, but the, um, yeah, usually if he wants to see a woman looking like that, that's not during work hours, but yeah, I love how adorable he is, just, you know, the, the, you know, oh, Alexander, are you great? Have you, con like, Alexander the Great, have you conquered anything recently? It just dishes. <laughs> and Belladonna just throws on the most ridiculous snorting laugh that felt very flea bag you know trying to, to like to, yeah stroke a, a man's ego and and being like just yeah um and and you know later there's oh you're so strong well i've been working out you know the restaurant lifting chairs i'm sorry he's really really funny um yeah the the I really dug the, the, um, I, I don't know if I am qualified to really speak on, I just wanted to note that I, you know, I'm, I'm sure people who are members of the community will, will, you know, be able to, to probe deeper into this, but I understand that the, uh, I actually don't remember the term there there is a specific term for it but there's something about that like the fact that trans people are you know perceived as the the yeah there's yeah perceived as different in a, a way that you know that they are sadly a very you know 
marginalized community. There's, you know, other marginalized communities that, that really can't stand them, including even some, you know, non-straight people, you know. Um, the, the, yeah. So there's a, <clears throat> there's a potent metaphor there with something like a vampire, you know, and yeah, I, I thought they did a, a really great job with that here. You know, the, the, you have this thing of how the, the, yeah, um, the two vampires here, or, uh, yeah, because see, she's, well, she's turning human. So I guess technically still a vampire. The two of them. Let's go with Dee Dee's girls. Let's go with Dee Dee's girls are, you know, trying to hide who they are. And, you know, sometimes there's sexual encounters. You know, they're, they're like, yeah, they're, they're in public. One of them isn't trying that hard to, to hide and you know she, like she's very confident belladonna is yeah it, it incredibly confident and then when when you know uh fey you know goes a, a, you know probes a little we see that there is some insecurity there which i understand is the case for many trans people uh, you know n not all but there, there are a number of trans people who project confidence, but deep down they are, there is some insecurity there, uh, you know, and, and that's, yeah, it's a, it's a trick that one can use regardless of one's identity. I, I've sometimes projected a lot of confidence when I was actually insecure. Um, so the, yeah, um, Faye... Uh, gradually becoming human, you know, is is a solid metaphor for the this thing of, you know, completely getting away from toxic relationships. You know, she's still, Dracula is still texting all this really hateful stuff. You know, apparently, like, oh, she ignored a few of his texts, and suddenly he's spamming f you and. You know, at, at one point, like, apparently the autocorrect, he was trying to type fey, and it autocorrected to fat. And, you know, he he types, OMG, I'm so sorry, you know, and, and then, like, not very long, you know, and, and corrects it to fey. And then not long after, it's like, oh, you know what, you actually are fat. And, and this, you know, they, they did a really great job um, making it clear how, how abusive and toxic Dracula is. And I don't think that it's a problem for it that we didn't see him or hear his voice or anything like that. Because that's not really... It's not really about... It, it, okay, my interpretation. It's not about the toxic partner. It's about how it affects the... the yeah. The gas-lighted, abused... You know, both both the ex and the current partner. You know, we see that... You know, Faye, you, you have that thing of, you know, first Faye tells Baldana, you sound just like him. And then later, you know, yeah, she, she slaps him, you know, she's like, keep those fucking moans out this fucking restaurant. And Belladonna's like, I'm going to, but first, would you like me to tell you who you sound like? You know, when, when she says, you know, I'm sorry, that was extreme. But, the, you know, this is an extreme circumstance, and, and, yeah, that is the kind of thing an abuser says, you know, it's, it's rationalizing, you know. Obviously, Faye is nowhere near as bad as Dracula, but, yeah, it does rub off on you. And I, I'm so glad we've gotten to a point where we can have this level of complexity in, because, like, if you go back, like, there's so much media about people who were abused that doesn't acknowledge that some people who were abused can end up abusing others. And again, like I said, absolutely does not make them as bad as the original. You know, 
It depends. If they end up abusing someone else as much as their abuser, then yeah, you know. But for a very long time, you had the perfect victim. You had the, the one that just cries and sits and, and, you know, accepts it and then is eventually able to escape or something. But that means that people who watch that and have been abused, if they go on and abuse someone else, even, you know, like a tiny little bit, they're going to only be able to see themselves as the abuser and not the person who was abused and later became abusive. So really, really appreciate that, you know, and, and you see like, you know, um, it triggers Faye and I use that completely unironically. I, I look forward to a day when I don't even have to specify that when we just accept that we shouldn't be joking about like PTSD and as a, you know, it, yeah, she gets extremely anxious and upset at the realization that she's sounding like Dracula. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and I really appreciate the detail, you know, for, for a while, you know, like Belladonna is basically acting like, you know, ah, oh, girls night out, you know, I just, I just text, texted one of my girls and we're going to have some fun, we're going to drink margaritas, you know, and Faye very deliberately says, no, I'll just have tap water. You know, and the, the, right, I was also great, you know, fill you up. <laughs> or was it Belladonna who said, will you fill me up or some, something like that, you know, and, the, and, and there was also, you know, with other fluids that just, yeah. Wow. Um, let's see. And, the uh, yeah, but you know, yeah, Belladonna's acting like it's a party and, you know, Faye is like, you said you were going to, to kill yourself you know what i i'm i'm here so we can talk this is not a party this is not you know and we realize by the end of it yeah it, you know she went there to give the book you know dracula wanted to um to give Faye the book to to you know yeah remind her and and that's also very triggering for for Faye. you know yeah the the this thing of, uh, you know, yeah, you know, w w it was something about I'll always remember Rome or something like that, you know, and yeah, we don't get a lot of details, but just, or maybe, yeah, um, and we don't need to because we, you know, yeah, this is Dracula and we, we see how Belladonna is, uh, you know, so we can, yeah, c clearly that's how... Faye was when they were together and yeah you know Dracula loves that he was able to make someone else do something awful Faye hates it and yeah even you know yeah they're they're no longer even together but Dracula just wants to assert his control over her um let's see um Right, I like the the um, Faye showing the um, the texts. You know that was a, a great um, yeah. Because because sometimes the way to to rem to make an abuser aware uh, uh, abuse some someone who's been abused. You know yeah to to make them realize how abusive someone is is to yeah get a different perspective on it look look at how he treats me his ex you know is is this that different from how he treats you right now and or don't you think he's eventually going to treat you the way he's treating me uh i love that it ends on an ambiguous note like it's not quite clear if she actually is going to end up you know, leaving Dracula. Um, right, I love the this whole community thing. Um, the fact that that's again something that you know we're seeing more in media for for a very long time. American media, there was a lot of there still is a lot of misogyny, but 
you know, again, when you look back on like stuff from the 80s and such, I've, I've watched a lot of TV and movies from the 80s. There's so much where if more than one woman is like in the same place, they maybe hate each other. They don't treat each other well, which I acknowledge, you know, I, I understand. I've, I've heard, you know, women on, on YouTube talk about that, you know, some women really don't treat each other well. And, you know, it's also something um, Jennifer's body does a, a good job um, exploring, which actually, yeah, I think wasn't this described as Jennifer's body meets, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd Google it, but my wrists are, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, um, this thing of like, cause, cause you see Belladonna, so you see Belladonna is trying to, to act like everything's fine and Faye keeps saying, but is it though? Are you, are you sure about this kind of thing? You know, and that's, that, that is the kind of friend that, you know, women need and and trans people and yeah people in abusive relationships you know you need help when you know when you are marginalized and a lot of the time that help is best from members of the same community they, they understand what you're going through you know i've i've seen a lot i i i worry that i myself in the past you know those of us you know i i don't particularly belong to any minority. I, I mean, I technically, you know, ADHD, I'm neurodivergent, but other than that, and, and, you know, there's people who know me who don't realize I'm neurodivergent. You know, there's a lot of margin, there's not a lot of, there are a lot of minorities, minority community, minority individuals who can't really hide and, and certainly shouldn't have to, you know, their minority status. Uh, where was I? The, the, yeah, those of us who are not part of those minority communities, we might think we're being helpful, but we actually end up saying something that sounds victim blamey or, you know, just, just, yeah, just doesn't take into account circumstance. You know, I've, I've seen like apparently a lot of men and I, I, I'd like to think I myself have never said this, but I understand that there are a number of men who, when their female partner t tells them that they were catcalled or, you know, otherwise harassed sexually in the street and such, you know, or, or not even just in the street, but sexually harassed in some way, you know, the, the man might just respond with, oh, well, I would think it was flattering, you know, you, why are you getting upset at something that's, you know, and that's just not at all the, the way to, yeah. Um, let's see, I think that might, right, uh, um, I really like the bit with, um, yeah, I mean, the, the sexual moaning in the restaurant, I mean, that has to be when Harry met Sally, right, which I, I understand, you know, that's, it's been years since I watched that movie. I, I realize in retrospect, there's some problematic aspects about it. I used to really love that movie. I I think I'd still get a lot of enjoyment out of it if I watched it today. Um, that is a movie that, that, you know, a number of women are also really fond of. Um, let's see. And... Uh, right, right, yeah, the, the, the bit at the end after, you know, she tears up the book and, and you know, Belladonna and, and Alexander are, are flirting and she just, <laughs> Faye steps in between them <laughs> and says, you know, can I have a menu? And, you know, he hands it to her in about as passive-aggressive a manner as he can without risking losing his job and she's like i'll have the chocolate lava cake and he's like that takes a while to prepare and she's like perfect because <laughs> she needs more time with belladon she needs to to talk more you know and and she really wants to get belladonna and alexander away from each other you know and and it's such a wonderful because like the the surface 
level is that Alexander is saying, your friend and I are really hitting it off. Is there any chance at all that you could order something that doesn't, you know, yeah. But obviously, the, the you know, yeah. Or this, hold on. Yeah, um, what, you know, if, if someone overheard, Alexander would say, what, I was just, I was just making sure she knew that it would be a while before she could have her dessert, kind of thing, you know. So, yeah, just really, really nicely done there. Um, right, the bit with, the bit at the start with, you know, oh, she, she hates the other women in, in LA, but oh, the men, they're so nice, and then, you know, the, the guy with the, the line and yeah want to do a line you know just yeah that that felt very flea bag to me this this thing of like she's she's so happy to get at least a little bit of of positive attention from from a man um let's see because because it is one of those things like you know it's not really I suppose it's not not nice, but it's also not like amazingly nice. You know, it's not the the most wonderful thing in the world to, to yeah. Um, is there anything I can? Yeah. I realize the lighting is not great. It's there's been some thunder in recent days, so I I'm not wild about not having the uh, yeah about having the curtains drawn, but I did not realize just how yeah apologies um let's see the other thing was the yeah and you know yeah it sounds like oh it's it's a you know casual sex encounter that doesn't do but then she takes the power back you know and and there's several you know they talk about are you a feminine or yeah yeah they talk about being a feminist which, you know, I, I understand is something that a number of young women struggle with because, you know, on, on, like they appreciate that they their, their freedom was hard won by previous generations of feminists. But, you know, it's also just, you know, can, can I just have five minutes? Can I just enjoy myself a tiny little bit without having to constantly feel like, you know, I, yeah. Um, let's see. And the... But but yeah, you know she she takes back she takes back the power in a way that completely, you know she's but by the end she's the only one who who wins in in this encounter. Uh, let's see what was the other thing that I wanted to right I I like the the th the thing with the werewolf roommates. What's what's that like living with with werewolves and there's a massive you know hair clogging the the drain. That was pretty funny. That's yeah. Um, and the the thing with you know obviously I can't you know the kitten can't live in my house because werewolves you know they'll they'll be fighting like wolves and cats. Um, let's see. Although, I mean, I don't know, is, is the implication supposed to be that one of the werewolves might literally eat the cat? Has Faye been listening to Trump and Vance's conspiracy theories? <laughs> he said that on the debate stage. Dude. Yeah. Um, let's see. What was the... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I quite like that, you know, the, you know, evidently she had a little bit of an, an argument with, uh, her, her partner, uh, uh, Faye did, and, you know, they're, they're texting back and forth, and, you know, there's some yelling involved, and, yeah, you have that thing about, you know, you know, you scare me when when you get like that 
and the yeah and she texts you know something like don't you fucking you know and yeah because and, and i th let's see i think it was specifically because Dee Dee was brought up you know so it is this thing of like yeah she she gets very very angry very defensive when that's uh, yeah and you know, yeah, her her partner is maybe a little worried about, you know, is Belladonna going to have a bad influence? Is is this good for my partner, you know? And and I, and I really appreciate that. I, I'm so glad that, yeah, like, it's, it is very clear from watching this. The way to get out of an abusive relationship is to talk to someone who is not currently in one. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't, you know, like, it seems like Faye, I'm not sure if Faye's current partner was ever in, a, in an abusive relationship, but, you know, she's clearly really, really good for, for Faye. And she, you know, Faye even says she's, she's too good for me. Um, let's see. I think... That might be... Oh, right, yeah, I, I appreciate that, you know, Belladonna is drinking liquor, but it's, you know, a, a red liquor. Um, let's see, and the... I feel like there was something else that I wanted to say. Um... But yeah, uh, I, I really appreciate this thing of, you know, Dee Dee just wanted the... I know, I realize, you know, the reason the characters here call him Dee Dee. It, in part, it's to not say Dracula, you know, out loud in, in public. I like the thing with, you know, you sound like... It's just like Vladimir. But the... the I don't know, I just... I like... The idea of giving Dracula a cute, non-threatening nickname like that. So that's why I'm using it. Um, but but yeah, you know, Dee Dee was thinking I can really get to, to Faye. And, and, you know, there was, there is some truth to that. But he didn't really think that Faye might be able to get to Belladonna, you know. And yeah, you know, it was this thing of like, Belladonna didn't, necessarily want to see Faye, but, you know, Dracula was threatening her, you know, if you don't give her the, the gift, you'll be eating worms tonight. And let's see. I think... Uh, let's see, what was the other thing that I... Um, let's see, there's the, um, hmm, maybe that is about it for the, yeah, um, really, really loved it, the, I, 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 I really hope that they, they keep, that, yeah, Nebula is really looking to just be a, a really great place for these, you know, short films that actually have somewhat of a budget and get into some stuff that YouTube is, you know, very, yeah, anxious about. Um... Feel like there was at least one more thing that I really wanted to say. Um, oh right, I like <laughs> Belladonna didn't have to call L.A. women Frankenstein's, you know. But yeah, it's the 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 metaphor works. It's a uh, yeah. They managed to fit in no less than three classic movie monsters. And, 
the did they did they say Frankenstein rather than Frankenstein's monster like purposefully to to see if it would get like a bunch of um actuallys and also given that this has both vampires and at least a mention of werewolves was Michael Sheen ever offered? I, I could see him playing Alexander. 